Welcome back to PGA Chain Design. Today we are going to make this belt buckle and to make the pattern a little bit puffy and rounded on the top. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm going to use the conic corner and let's go into rectangle, right click on the very last one and I snapping into the center. I would like to have the center for zero and the length gonna be 80 and the high it's going to be 50 and then I want to move my mouse in a little bit to get some pillow shape like this the one that I have in the demo that one is about a little bit smaller and it's oval size but I'd like to challenge it to get a little bit different shape this time okay so basically we need to uh, make them into the solid uh, we simply just going to extrude it make them a little bit taller uh, if you are going to print this out you need to make sure that you have enough thickness uh, getting too thin you and with the really big piece then you might have some problem with it all right so in this case I got three millimeter you might want to get a little bit thicker if you're going to print it out maybe just a little bit thicker like that Okay, the second thing is we need to do our design. You can um, draw a design, whatever design you like. I have something that I already draw the line work on, on uh, right here, so it's kind of saving our time. And then you just you know place whatever you want this piece to be, or size, or narrow, or whichever it's going to look like. So I'm going to make them uh, look more like this. Okay, to make them into the solids, quite simple as well. We are going to select the one in the middle and one thing I would like to say because we're gonna make it pretty round so you do not want to have some really tight angle so for example if this one is a little bit too tight I would simply just delete that and make them a little bit wider so I don't have like really really tight angle to make them uh, puffy so for example on this one you might want to you know <clears throat> modify your your curve so make sure they are not like too pointed this might be too pointed at the end there but let's deal it with the center skull first so I'm going to pick, pick up all of this and coming on to the right view let's go ahead simply just extrude it straight and for whatever thickness that you want I simply going to move those piece up so I basically wanted to do is to move it about this high all right, as long as I have a little bit intersection, I will be fine. And this one too, I want to move it maybe a little bit lower, kind of showing the depth there. The second one for the rolls, and I'm going to do the same thing. Let's go ahead to extrude it solid straight and going up for whatever high like that. And then we're going to coming over to the right view, pick up those rolls only. And then let's move it up a little bit. Maybe this is a little bit lower. Okay, so now we have something like this temporary. It's easier for others to operate it. I'm just gonna lock this one. To make it a little puffier, Rhino 7 has a new function and this is called a uh, quad remesh. It's pretty, pretty cool. So what you wanted to do Let's say if we want to quad remesh this guy and we just stay with the preset and let's preview and see what happened. All right. So instead of like mesh, it will give you a lot of a triangle. They all have a full sided, right? So what does that matter with us if we have this quad remesh? And this is the mesh that we have. And I'm just going to pick up the poly surface and just hide it there and so we can just look at this one all right so we have a command called smooth and if we smooth it and you know the higher number that you get is gonna get it rounder so you can do something like that then you can get something really really smooth like this all right let's take a look on the render view to see what it look like you will still get a little bit sharp edges here so that's one way to do it the other way in the Rhino 7 is pretty cool too we're gonna go back few steps all right so 
go back to the ghost view. This two, we're going to pick it up. We still use a uh, quad remesh, but this time let's convert it to the sub the object. We can preview it and then we can also hide the input. So as you can see, this is a lot more uh, smoother already and you can change in the, um, the quad count. So let's say we're going to reduce dramatically to 50. So you will have a less quad there, but at the same time, you soften the, uh, the edge a little bit. You don't want to do it too much because it might deform it too much. Okay. So if that is working for you, we're going to pick up this and then take a look on the render view. See, it's nice and puffy there. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the same thing on this rose here. Going to pick up the rose and then we're going to do quad remesh and we state the same thing, convert it to the sub D and we can preview it and see if that's what we want. All right. So hide the input. Okay. So once it's done to pick up all the poly surface, the quickest way is to using the selection tool. And then you want to pick up the poly surface, but not the one on the bottom and we want to hide it. Okay, cool. All right. So if this is what you're looking for, so all we need to do is pick up those and then let's group it. And we want to mirror to the other side to be like this. Okay. So now this is done. Um, we want to do the decoration on the side. So let's go ahead to using the length command and we want to pick up this and know like how long that is. I'm just simply just going to make a copy here on the top and then we're going to draw a straight line from here for the same number and holding my shift. Hit enter. So that is the length for this edge right there. And then second thing we want to do is we want to design whatever pattern you're going to use. I simply want to create a leaf looking things like this and then have that one to mirror to the other side. Okay. And simply just join them together and let's give it a fitted. So I want to fit it for something really small, like a 0.25, for example. So have it something a little bit rounded there. Okay. So that is one of the element. Um, let's make sure this one is joined at the same time. We want to split with the point and the point will be the midpoint here and midpoint here. So then we got two curve there. Okay. So to make it into the solid, I need to create some sort of uh, cross section first using the arc tool, snapping here and here, coming up to my front view. So then we have a half round over there on my perspective. Okay. So if that is too tall for you, you are always welcome to pick up the top three point and kind of a, uh, and kind of move it down if that, if you like that shape better. All right. So let's go ahead to using the sweep two, rail one, rail two, make sure you're starting from the point, pick up the middle one and end it with the point again. So then you will get something really puffy like this. Okay. So let's use the cap command. So now it is solid. We are going to come in back here. Simply just place this one, rotate it into uh, whatever degree that work nice. So I simply just going to have something like this and mirror that to the other side. So going something like that. All right. It doesn't have to touch because it's going to sitting on this plate. But um, if you like it to touch, uh, you can simply move it down. And before you mirror, let's hit the hit record history. So then if you don't like it, you want them to get closer, you will have like life update or you want to change the, the angle, things like that. Okay. So now this is working. We are going to using the array tool for linear array and I'm going to need it 
Maybe, hold on, I need to make it a little bit bigger. Now I'm looking at it overall. I think this pattern is a little bit too small. And it will break the history, but that's okay. I'm already not going to change in the angle. All right, so I'm going to use linear array. And I'm going to, hmm, I don't know how many, maybe 40. And then um, first reference, make sure the near point is on. And 40 definitely is not enough. Okay, so we're going to come back, do it again. Maybe we need uh, 70 uh, first reference points here. And I want to make sure that my near point is on and something really close like this. All right. And double make sure if you like this pattern. Look like we don't have it enough. So I may just going to copy this to this over here. All right. Okay, so if everything looks nice to you, um, we are going to pick up this one and put it on the top because we want the pattern flow inside of it, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead to flow it. Let's go ahead to use the flow along the curve. We're going to pick up the object here, not that curve. And we're going to pick up one end. And just doing a test, the target is this curve here. Notice that it is going outside. It's because we are picking on the wrong side of this is and target. It happened all the time. So I simply just need to move it this down to the other side. And we're going to do again. I also adjust the number there. It seems like they are a little bit uh, too fat there. Um, so then I'm going to use the same command flow along the curve. Make sure we record a history and we want to click the base curve and also the target curve. All right. So since we record the history, if you feel like this is like too close to the end, you might want to move this line up a little bit and then everything will update it. Or if you find a pattern that's kind of too wide that you don't like it, we can come into the top view and then simply select everybody there and just uh, scale it down 1D like this and moving this guy up close to here. All right, so it looked like in the right place, but I feel like it's missing one piece there. And simply we can just copy one uh, over there. So instead of do the whole things again. All right, uh, it just look like I'm missing one piece. I just saw it now. But for this demonstration, I'm going to leave it there. All right, so let me hide in all the curve there. And then I would like to select all this little parts there. If you like to make them a little bit more pronounced, then you can kind of want these scales. It will break the history, but it's okay. You can keep editing at this point. And I also like to have a fit of edges there. So we're going to try maybe one here and here. So then we'll have something like this. Okay. This is a poly surface and this is a poly surface. That's fine that you can boolean union together, but this is a sub D over here. So we need to turn a sub D into the poly surface. So let's go ahead to, so I want to pick up my sub D object with that. And we're going to turn the sub D into the NURB by using this icon converted object to the NURB. And I usually don't want to delete the input just in case I'm going to do something else. So let me hide a sub D, then this will be our poly surface. So once you boolean union everything into one piece, I do want to make them a little bit curve. Uh, so what I like to do is select the, my uh, piece and then coming over here with the bend tool. And we want to bend to snapping somewhere in the middle and drag it about outside of the object. And then make sure that symmetrical right here on the top is yes. So you can bend both at one, both sides at once. And then I want it to go something like this. It doesn't have to be extreme, just a little bit curved will look nicer. Okay, so then we need to uh, working on the mechanism in the back. So that's coming into the right view. I simply want to draw maybe a rectangle something like this and we don't actually need the top one so i'm simply just going to explode it this guy 
and then uh, just delete the one on the top and also wanted to give it a big fillet so maybe four and round it off the corner here and here okay so how tall is this piece is based on how thick is your material your letter is going through right uh, and then i'm going maybe that's too thick i'm just gonna scale it down something like this okay so remember to join them first before you pipe it and we're gonna simply using the pipe for about four or five millimeter there okay now double make sure if the gap right between here is enough for your bell to go through then we wanted to use a align tool that's aligned vertical center and we're simply just moving this guy back to the bottom and we want to move it to the side there and you can keep tweaking if you want them to wider you know taller or things uh, double make sure the distance is correct before you bowling them together the second thing is i need to have some sort of a hook things and so i'm just simply gonna draw a curve like this and if you have something like what i have they are not um, right in the construction plan what you can do is project to c plan and make sure you want to delete the input so now they are flat there and we're simply just gonna pipe it so that's pipe it for radius let's say 1.5 so then we will have a post there uh, if if any of you are specialized in the bell buckle making uh, you may leave a comment there let me know what is the right length and things for this post and for this catch all right so after you bowling then that will be our bell buckle i hope you enjoy the video there are a lot more trick and tip on my membership program join the membership i hope you see you there thank you for watching see you next